everybody, Dr. Vorholt here at Implant Pathway. Gonna go over a couple tabletop models here of how we um, do our fixed full arch cases in an analog setting. So what we do traditionally um, day in, day out here at the clinic for patients that have decided to go to a full zirconia bridge on four or six or eight implants, okay? So for the sake of this tabletop discussion, we're going to assume that your patient has already been converted. So day of surgery, whether you did the surgery or a specialist did the surgery, um, the patient has left with a converted denture. So multi-units are already in, they're in some sort of converted prosthesis and it's been four or six months and you're ready to make the next step for the final prosthetic, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at the tabletop. Let's assume that this is our patient here. Okay, it's a 3D model of a patient, but the patient comes in and you can see the multi-units and the gingival healing. So how do we go from this situation into whether it's a provisional PMMA or the final zirconia? So for the sake of discussion, let's take the top jaw here. First thing we have to do is choose our analogs. So with multi-level unit impressions, we don't need an impression of where the implant body is. We only care about where these multi-levels are, okay? So in my hand here, I have a closed tray multi-unit uh, impression coping. So this simply screws down onto our multi-unit. Oh, if I don't drop it. And it does have an 050, oh, sorry. It does have an 050 driver um, that's available to put this in. But you can also do it with like kind of finger tighten. So we're gonna do this for all the multi-levels in the arch, okay? So next we're gonna take our impression. So for instance, this impression. So this impression has been taken with those closed tray. You can see it's not sticking through the impression. So it's not open tray, it's closed tray. What you're gonna do then is take these back out of the patient's mouth. You or the lab will attach the lab analog, the multi-unit lab analog. So we'll screw these two pieces together. And then that is going to go back into your impression. So all five or six or however many are gonna be sent to the lab like this, okay? The lab is going to pour up this model and unscrew the little coping. And what they'll have is something similar to this. So they'll have a soft tissue moulage. That's the uh, polyvinyl, the pink polyvinyl here. And then they'll have the multi-level here, okay? So the big concern at this point in the process is how accurate is this impression? Because we know we need this final prosthetic to be extremely passive on all these multi-units. So there's no stress on the screws or stress on the zirconia or stress on the implants. So what the lab is gonna send you, and we use Pro Smiles Dental Studio up in uh, Rapid City, South Dakota, they're gonna send you two things. They're gonna send you a V-jig or a verification jig, okay? So the verification jig is going to separate all the implants. I think they use uh, some form of triad. And then there's each one has its own you know, titanium coping. And they're also gonna send you a wax rim, okay? The wax rim just to get the video of the bite. Wax rim will typically not have all of the copings looted. So this one only has four. And typically when I put these in the patient's mouth, I will only actually engage one screw if that's enough to keep it steady to get my VDO. I don't need to use all four or six of them, okay? So at this, at this phase of the VJIG appointment, we're gonna unscrew this from the model and they've even nicely labeled everything for us here. Um, I'll flip it over so you can read it. Um, so one through six, so that you don't get confused. So put them in the mouth, just make sure they're not touching in the mouth, okay? What I'll typically do is actually put some uh, adhesive bond on this outside of the mouth and cure it so that in the mouth, when it's all looted, I'll use a bulk, bulk flowable and just quickly loot all these uh, six or however many pieces there are. So once that's been looted, it's going to look something like this, okay? So in this instance, they only had five. So all five have been looted now. This does not get screwed back into the model. Do not attempt to put it back on here because if there's any um, issues on passivity, which there typically is, this will crack. And that's um, the whole point actually is to send this back, just wrapped up in bubble wrap lightly, okay? So take the V-jig, get your wax bite, send those two things back. And what we're gonna get back is a provisional PMMA, okay? You could also ask for a wax setup. So if you wanted them to just send you this in wax, so you can make sure you like the, 
color, shape, size if you have a more aesthetically picky patient. Um, we typically will go straight to PMMA because there's always, we can still make changes from this step going forward to the zirconia. I want to show you a couple of reasons why we do the VJ. Okay, so uh, this is a really good example here, and uh, I'll have Chris zoom in for us. But if we lightly put the VJ back on the model that this came from, what I want to show you is, let me make sure I'm holding this right spot. If we look at this multi lap unit right here, let me get a nice zoom on that. See how that's not quite seated? There's a little bit of a gap. There's even a little bit of a rock to this when I put it back on the model. Um, also, on this one back in the corner, a little bit of a gap. Okay, so these are the kind of discrepancies that the VJIG is trying to figure out. Is these itty bitty, we're talking tenths of millimeters, or it, even if that. But that is enough to put extra strain on these itty bitty screws um, to cause some either screw breaking, screw loosening, um, prosthetic breakage, uh, implant failure, all sorts of stuff. So passivity is super important. So when this goes back to the lab, I'll show you what they're going to do with it. So let's go back to our other model over here. This is our soft tissue model. So here's what the lab is working with and what you've seen. Soft tissue model is done. That's done at the preliminary impression with your, with your, um, with your impression coping. All right? So the soft tissue is not going to change. There's no more soft tissue surgery going on. So we have already captured the soft tissue. What we're worried about is the exact location of these implants and multi-units. So here's the VJIG for this case, but essentially what the lab is going to do is they're going to remove, whether it's digitally or analog, they're going to remove the moulage, okay? They're going to break free these implant analogs, what's in the stone, okay? And they're gonna re, just re-loot these. So you can see even in this model, there are some minor discrepancies just enough to potentially cause problems down the road, okay? So especially on number, looks like number four, there's a bit of a gap here. Um, and number two looks pretty well seated. Number three might have a little bit of a gap. So these kind of, and number five. So three, four, five, there's some distortion between the original model and this verified model, which is, we accept that. We know that because we're just taking an open tra or a closed tray impression. You know, we're not looting these all together. So, they're going to re-pour this model up with the correct uh, multi-unit you know, spacing and how they relate to each other. And then they'll simply take their moulage, like I said, whether it's digital or analog, and they'll relay this over the top. So now they'll have a verified model. It's that model that they're going to use to then make your PMMA. Okay? Hopefully that made a little bit more sense kind of on how we go from this step for your patient to final. So in our in our clinic, it's one preliminary impression visit, just to re reiterate, one preliminary impression. And then we're gonna start, the next visit will be a V-jig and a wax rim. And the third visit will be a provisional PMMA, okay? If this PMMA goes in the patient's mouth and does not fit, the midline is way off, there is some major occlusal issue, what we'll do is we'll adjust in the patient's mouth. So maybe we'll make a slot in the midline. Maybe we'll adjust the occlusion if it's this side's the only side that's hitting. And we'll send all of that back to the lab and put the patient back in their provisional denture. If it's a minor adjustment, patient doesn't like the shade, maybe the teeth could be a little longer. Maybe there was a minor occlusal adjustment done on like these two teeth. We'll keep it in the patient's mouth and just make note of it for the lab for when they go to zirconia. The other thing you're gonna check, a panoramic, I like to take panoramics when they're in PMMA with just one screw down. Also, when you put the screw, one screw in, you should feel no rocking. That's how you, one way to kind of tell if it's passive is if one screw alone, usually one of the middle screws, if that screw by itself eliminates all rocking, then you can be pretty confident that everything is nice and passive. A panoramic with that one screw should show that all the copings are nice and tight and down and there's no gap. Um, if you're happy with that and the patient wears it for four to six weeks and they like the function and the look, then you can just call the lab on the phone and say, go ahead and process that to zirconia. They already have the digital file. That's all they have to do. If there's minor adjustments, you can either ask for a new PMMA. You can say, hey, please fill in the gingiva one millimeter above number eight because there's a little gap there or lengthen eight and nine, fix the midline, whatever. You can do one more PMMA until you're or as many as you want until you're uh, confident that you're, you and the patient will be very happy and go to zirconia. Okay. 
Hopefully that made a little bit more sense. I know that this is kind of a gray area when it comes to the surgical part and how do we get to the final. So um, in our clinic, like I said, it's three visits to get the patient into a PMMA, which is just a polymethyl methacrylate, um, kind of a longer term, good looking temp. And if that patient is super satisfied and everything fits passively, we'll go straight to zirconia, you know, a month or two later. So it could be as little as four visits. There are some digital things that you can learn here at Implant Pathway that might shorten that down to two visits and then maybe the accuracy is a little bit better as well. But that's for the analog stuff. That's what we do day to day. Hope you enjoyed it.